Caspar Hauser's story deals with a young man who, even though we don't know everything about this young man and we don't know the truth about who he was, we have a very good idea that this was a bloke who probably lived with learning difficulties. So Vicky Aykroyd, who's our Access champion, offered us the ability, the chance to be able to work with Mind the Gap. So we've got Paul in the space and we've got Joanne in the space over the course of this week. Um, and we're really interested in bringing them in first and foremost as actors, but also opening the company to, to another type of experience that we don't have access to. So we don't have to sit around guessing about what that experience is. We actually have people in the space who can offer it themselves from their own perspectives of why this story is really important today. Mind the Gap is the largest company in England with learning disability. I'm more dancer, physical theatre and art based. So this has been perfect for me. It's all sensory and touch and get covered in paint and have fun. I've been at Mind the Gap for nearly eight years. Um, and I'm also doing the R&D for this uh, workshop as well. Oh, when we did the R&D a couple of weeks ago, we got paint out and use your voice and make it wiggles what your voice does and that was quite fun. And we had to write things down what we saw on people's paper that we thought we saw like, some people put dark, sea, grass and um, other things like what we thought we saw and then we had to write a little poem what story about what we saw on the paper. Getting to know a bit about Casper as well, it's been quite fun. They came to um, look for someone who's had experience in uh, physical theatre and because um, I've worked with a lot, uh, with a lot of space with Gecko Theatre Company and then because they liked us and they enjoyed what we did they then bought us um, to Leeds to do um, R&D week. I knew a bit about, I liked the drawing that I did Casper drew his horse, he drew his horse and I really like that. I like the touch and the sound and the taste. Like the honey, I could smell the honey. And the grass, it smelled like on, on the seaside at one point, smelling the grass coming off the sea. From, I can just imagine Casper being a little boy that just didn't know what's happening and then next minute he's in a world that he doesn't know. And then, of course, the smell, he might be overwhelmed at one point, so he doesn't want to know. And then, hopefully, as he gets a bit older, I can just imagine him as a teenager, like, ooh, ooh, that's nice. Can I, I can eat that. I sort of listen to what they're doing, because at first I was a bit nervous. I think what's really important about where this piece goes is not necessarily where it goes, but who it plays in front of. And... I'm really interested in making lab theatre. I want to make it resonate with learning disabled audiences. I want, it, I want it to resonate with UK theatre audiences, more traditional audiences. There are our own followers and our own supporters that we wish to bring in as well, but I want to make the work more relevant and I want to make it more accessible so that people, when they watch the work, they can go, oh, I understand that, and I can do that. That's really important to us. So it's not so much about where we go. This is a great theater. It's small, it's intimate. That really works for this piece. But it's about who sat in the audience. I think that's what makes the company happy, you know? <laughs>